Right now, Superstorm Sandy hitting the Northeast. A live picture from Atlantic City showing the streets flooded under feet of water. A live look at radar where you can see what is now Tropical Storm Sandy drenching New Jersey. That's where it made landfall just three hours ago. And just into 7 News, look at this YouTube video of an explosion at the Con Ed power plant. Water flooding the facility, causing almost all of lower Manhattan to go dark. In total, 3 million Americans without power right now. The mayor begging people to stay inside. Do not drive. Let me repeat that. Please do not drive. The time to leave has passed. Do not go outside. It is still very dangerous. And new video just in showing some of the damage. The facade on this building on 92nd Street in Manhattan gone. No injuries in this case, but more than 10 deaths are now being blamed on the storm. And 7 News with live team coverage tonight. Chief Meteorologist Mike Nelson tracking this superstorm. Mark Stewart is live at DIA with how it's impacting travel nationwide. Jacqueline Allen digging into the impact on local hotels already reaching capacity. And we start with ABC's TJ Winnick live in Cape May, New Jersey at the center of this superstorm. Good evening. Sandy may have made landfall several hours ago, but we can tell you that the winds have kicked up considerably since then. It undoubtedly means many more power outages tonight across the Northeast. Sandy made landfall in southern New Jersey this evening, packing 80 mile per hour winds. Before coming ashore, the wrath and strength of this superstorm was wreaking havoc throughout the Northeast. Record breaking high tides and rough surf battered the coastline. And this is nothing to be trifled with. It's really not. Roads washed away as communities got hit hard by flooding. Water was pouring into ground zero in New York. More than 3 million people are without power in 11 states. Part of the city that never sleeps is in the dark. The wall of a four-story building collapsed in lower Manhattan, exposing apartments inside. No one was injured. But at least seven storm-related deaths have been reported in Connecticut, Maryland, and five in New York, including three children. Public transportation for more than 12 million people came to a halt in New York, Philadelphia and Washington, D.C. It'll likely take three to four days after the storm passes for things to get back to normal. By next weekend, most travelers should be where they needed to go. And it isn't just people on the East Coast feeling the effects of Sandy. Air travel across the country has been impacted by delays and cancellations. And when the eye of the storm passed over Atlantic City, the winds abated, clouds parted, and the full moon came out. Here on the Jersey Shore, there are curfews in place in many communities for those that chose not to evacuate. What we can tell you is that officials will begin to assess the damage at first light in the morning. Reporting live in Cape May, TJ Winnick, ABC News. Now back to you. Our team coverage of the superstorm continues with Chief Meteorologist Mike Nelson, who is tracking the storm for us. Uh, we have all that information for you. Also, 14 crew members of the tall ship HMS Bounty rescued off the Coast Guard by the Coast Guard off North Carolina. The body of a missing crew member recovered late today, but the captain is still missing tonight. The Bounty was built in 1962 for the movie Mutiny on the Bounty, the ship owned by a man who was in Denver when she sank. I've just spent my life, you know, rebuilding this ship to get her to where it is. We, we saved her from literally the graveyard uh, once. And, and to have her go like this is just heart-wrenching. The Bounty's captain and crew had survival suits that would keep them safe for 15 hours, but as of now, no sign of him. Our team coverage of this superstorm continues. Mike Nelson has been following Sandy very closely. We're talking about a foot of rain in some areas tonight, Mike. We are a long, long ways from this storm being over with. As T.J. Winnick mentioned, the eye of the storm went right over Atlantic City. That was about 7 o'clock this evening. As the winds swirl around that hurricane, look at what the wind gusts did. They're now out of the southeast, but earlier as the storm approached, they were from the northwest. And as the eye went overhead, the skies went to partly cloudy, got a break in the rain, Look how low that pressure was, almost 28 inches on the barometer. Right now, that storm is transitioning over into a nor'easter type storm, a huge cyclone across the northeastern part of the country. You can see the wind field as it flows on toward the west, toward Pittsburgh over the next 24 to 36 hours. The dominant threat is now going to be heavy rain. We'll still have some very high surf through the night into tomorrow, but the rain threat and heavy snow threat will be the combination. They'll be the biggest problem over the next couple of days. Up to three feet of snow in the mountains, up to 10 to even 12 inches of rain from Washington, D.C. 
down into coastal Maryland. You can track this storm system with our Storm Shield app on both iPhone and Android, and you'll be able to track all the latest warnings and the path of the storm right on your smartphone. Mike and Ann. New tonight, seven students from Rock Canyon High School in Highlands Ranch are stuck in a New York hotel. They're supposed to come home tonight. We talked to one of their chaperones who says they're getting antsy. Earlier today, the kids were going a little, they had a little cabin fever. Mm -hmm. A little stir crazy sitting there. Um, I'm figuring it's not really going to hit until about tomorrow that, that we can't really go anywhere because right now they're advising for us not to leave the hotel. And apparently the first floor of the hotel is starting to flood right now. The students there for a mock trial tournament. They shot this video before they were told to stay indoors. They're on the sixth floor and they're taking comfort in knowing that some FEMA workers are also staying at this same hotel. Planes from across the country now parked at DIA. Air Tracker 7 showing about 30 jets positioned here out of harm's way. 7 News reporter Mark Stewart is live at DIA tonight. And Mark, it's not just the East Coast dealing with travel troubles. And this is widespread. United here now telling us they are experiencing problems at both its Chicago and Cleveland hubs. That's in addition to the airports up and down the East Coast. Tonight, it's very clear that Sandy's scars will last for days. Frustrating, but it's weather. Jim and Kathy Wallace are sitting still for now. The flight board says it all. Their trip to Ohio is canceled. We knew the East Coast was being hit, but we didn't think it would be as bad as it is. As the Wallaces ponder what to do next, so too are the airlines. Seven News obtaining these pictures from inside the Frontier Airlines Flight Operations Center in Indianapolis. The goal is to have people in planes and strategic spots. So when the weather clears, it's all systems go. Flooded. Yet passengers from all airlines are being told it may take days to get back into the sky. Is that an exaggeration? I don't think it's an exaggeration to say it could be a week before things get back to normal. The reason is, with the airline model today, there are virtually no extra seats. There are virtually no extra planes. We are going to chill tonight, <laughs> definitely. This storm is impacting virtually all aspects of aviation. FedEx, for example, is now telling its customers it cannot guarantee overnight delivery, particularly for, for cities in that zone. Live in Denver tonight, Mark Stewart, 7 News. 7 News always investigating, and tonight we're checking with hotels around the airport dealing with stranded travelers. Jacqueline Allen live. And Jacqueline, you found many are filling up fast. This storm may be on the other side of the country, but the superstorm means super businesses for hotels here on Ta Tower Road near DIA. We found out the airport has asked these hotels to keep them posted about room availability so they know where to send passengers stranded by Sandy. You don't miss from Mother Nature. <laughs> Paget so, Wilson yeah. is supposed to be home in North Carolina right now. Instead, she's sleeping at the Quality Inn near DIA. We're going to be here until at least Thursday, if that. At the front desk, Hurricane Sandy coverage plays in the background as some call in to cancel reservations, but even more have surprised layovers. We're about to sell out, actually. I'm flying back to Charlottesville, Virginia, mm -hmm. and my brother's flying back to D.C. Kendra and John Worgen spent the weekend in Essex Park for the grandfather's 100th birthday. Their flights home have been canceled too, though they figured out a way to fly out tomorrow. I'm just flying to North Carolina, which, which should be okay now. Um, I'm going to rent a car, drive, drive back to D.C. That's a seven-hour drive for him to get home faster. Wilson says she's also planning some driving to make the best of being stuck. We're actually thinking about renting a car <laughs> and doing some sightseeing. Good attitude. Now, we wanted to know if hotel room rates were going up because of all the stranded travelers, but I checked 10 hotels here on Tower Road this week's room rates compared to next week's room rates, and they were all just about the same. In fact, some hotels were even offering discounts for stranded travelers here because of the hurricane. Reporting live in Denver, Jacqueline Allen, 7 News.